story. I'm Colleen Deli, a producer here at America Media in New York. Even if you aren't sure who the St. Louis Jesuits are, if you've been to Mass in the last 50 years, you probably know their songs. Here I Am, Lord, One Bread, One Body. These songs brought a new folk sound to church music after Vatican II. Last week, 50 years after they first started writing music together, the five St. Louis Jesuits returned to St. Louis for a final show. Joining me today to discuss this show and the St. Louis Jesuits' legacy is Father Rock O'Connor, one of the St. Louis Jesuits and the composer of Lift Up Your Hearts. Welcome to Behind the Story Rock. Hiya, Colleen. Good, Good to, to see, see you. <laughs> Before we get started, let's watch a quick video from last week's show. Sure. The St. Louis Jesuits returned home for one final concert that drew people who have loved their music for decades. That includes Donna Benton, who met her husband in a church community. He was part of the music ministry and so played all of these songs. She walked down the aisle to Tim Mannion's Emmanuel 40 years ago. And he has recently died, and so when I heard about this, I just had to come home. It was a day of nostalgia, but also of gratitude to God. church are teaching me what God has given us through these things that we have created. You are teaching me the meaning of it, which is well beyond anything I plan. As we begin today's discussion, I want to take a moment to remind our viewers that you can send us your questions for Rock through Facebook or Twitter, and we'll try to answer as many as possible here on the show. So Rock, the five of you have done a number of farewell shows over the years, but this one was billed as a final farewell celebration. Why did you decide that now was, this time, now was the right time to close this chapter? Um, well, I do want to correct one thing. Uh, I don't think our other... Uh, concerts have been final concerts. They've been anniversary sorts of things, 30 years, 40 years, whatever years. And um, this one felt like the right thing to do for a number of reasons. One was um, I'm on the board of the Ignatian Spirituality Project, and I uh, thought this would be a good way to both highlight the good work they're doing as well as the, uh, you know, raise some funds for them. So that's one aspect. The other aspect was I didn't want to miss one more opportunity to do music with these guys. It's always felt like when we play and sing together, there's something more that happens between us that is wonderful and true and it's like finding the groove you know in right. music you find it and it's there it's there when we do this yeah i and, think that was really palpable during the show i mean the bond between you guys and honestly among the choir many of whom had performed with you before back at college church in st louis and also the people in the audience who were singing along the whole time Rocket, you mentioned that this show was your idea. How did it come about? How did you organize it? Um, the first idea was about a fundraiser for ISP. Can you tell us the about what they do? They give, uh, they were founded 21 years ago by Jesuit Father Bill Creed. And uh, they're now directed by Mr. Tom Drexler, the, 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 the president of the organization. Um, they give homeless retreats. They give retreats to homeless, to men and women who are in recovery. And uh, there are 31 cities across the U.S. and Canada. I think there are two more coming on board this fall uh, that, that have groups that gather to organize the retreats and to uh, give Ignatian retreats to these folks, and it, it ties right together with the uh, spiritual exercises. Uh, they're very much similar in their attempts to engage people in, at the core of their being. So you organized this show as sort of a fundraiser for them, in addition to a reunion. Yeah. Well, we don't have, we didn't have any uh, plans 
plans to record music together. We had no plans to get together to do um, any other works together. So it seemed to me that <laughs> the, the reality of aging and the reality of, uh, you know, just that part of saying uh, thank you to, to the people of God as a way not of, of, of disappearing, but as a way of saying, we want, I wanted to formalize this event, of this passing on of our work, and saying, though we are going to do things individually, the, the confraternity that has been the St. Louis Jesuits, uh, we're handing on and, 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 and saying, thank you very much. This has been a great blessing to us. I hope it's been a blessing to you. Yeah, I think that that sense really came across at the show. Um, I know it was particularly moving, you know, John Foley, he's on a walker now, his voice isn't as strong as it used to be. And whenever he would sing, that was just, that was so clear and so moving. Wasn't it? Yeah. Oh my goodness, when he sang uh, Song of Hope, and then right yeah. afterwards, you walked over and kissed him on the head, and it was the most tender moment ever. Uh, it was, I just had to do that. I mean, to acknowledge uh, the practice that he put in ahead of time yeah. and the vulnerability that he showed in, in, in singing that solo and doing such a great job. Uh, that was my response to him being so lovely and vulnerable. Oh, it was absolutely beautiful. Mm. I think for a lot of people, the show was a really bittersweet experience. Um, you had yeah. so many people in the room who your music has meant so much to, and everyone was celebrating, everyone was singing along, but you know, there was also this sense of, sense of nostalgia and maybe sadness that this was the last time this was happening. I'm wondering, yeah. how were you feeling throughout the whole weekend? There are a number of parties around the concert, too. It was remarkable. You know, uh, my sense was that uh, my experience of being uh, of practicing on Friday night with the other guys and my brother, of running through it, all the songs and getting timing and finding the groove and being serious, we also just laughed our heads off. We had so much fun together Friday night. You had fun on stage uh, too. Just, <laughs> we did have fun on stage and that's part of the you know, that's what opens up when we sing together. Yeah. That's um, what opens up in our hearts that when we sing together. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I want to remind our viewers at home that if you have questions for Rock, you can send them to us on Facebook or Twitter, and we'll try to answer as many as possible at the end of the show. Um, I want to spend a few minutes, Rock, talking with you about the legacy of the St. Louis Jesuits. Obviously, your songs had a huge, huge influence on what church music sounded like for the last 50 years, but in some places, we're also seeing a trend away from that kind of folk-inspired sound. I'm wondering, you know, where do you think that Catholic music is going next? Good question. Good question. If I had the old proverbial, uh, you know, crystal ball, I'd tell you. Um, here's two things. I, I believe our legacy is uh, the music we have given. The, the articles we've written, the, the, the workshops we've given to people around the country and the world. A lot of folks have mentioned how their, the music we wrote in the early 70s and recorded gave them an impetus in a, to, to, to write. Uh, you know, Marty Haugen, David Haas, uh, uh, Michael Janka, so many other people. Hey. Uh, the folks from England are <clears throat> such wonderful composers they are. I think, here's, I have a very odd and particular view on where I think church music can go. Tell me. You want to hear it? You ready? I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's this. How do we learn to pray? as a divided and divisive church. Mm. What does that mean? Um, the question that I have that I'm writing about now 
has to do with that. Um, divisions happen, and they keep happening, they keep happening. But how do I learn to take responsibility to get a view of my own capacity for divisiveness? Hmm. Um, it's by looking at the collateral damage I inflict on others by my um, anger at losing turf. So you can say about the quotes the St. Louis Jesuit uh, legacy, and there's new music out there now. I could really be upset about that and say, those bastards, they don't get what they're doing, blah, 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 blah. As I learn to pray with that, as I learn to uh, engage that part of my life, there's a reality there that uh, when I come before God in liturgy and in prayer, it sets me, it locates me before God in a whole other way. I'm not the really nice guy. I'm not the really always kind and lovable teddy bear, you know, the people think I am, I am divisive. What in my generation, the boomers, how do we learn to pray as people full of fear and anger? Yeah, and it's I think an honesty, where, right? It's, a, it's another level of honesty um, where Sharon Parks wrote this many years ago, 25, 30 years ago, in, in the critical years. I still think it's brilliant that we come to the edge of our, as we come to the edge and admit the limits, the limitations of our ideologically compatible groups, we can start to move into adulthood. Hmm. And that kind of loss that kind of vulnerability, that kind of uh, stepping into not shielding from fear and rage, I think that's where music, our music in the future uh, can address. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. No, totally. It's risky. It is, but yeah, I mean, it's necessary. I appreciate I so. your honesty and your vulnerability about that. We do have a question from Twitter that I want to ask you real quick. Um, this is from House of Davis on Twitter, and she wants to know, could this be like Cher's farewell tour, which goes on for years and tours the world, especially Canada? I think she wants you to come to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Cher's really set the standard, I think. <laughs> <laughs> for a final concert. That's off to her. Um, I don't think so. Uh, John Foley at 80 and walking with a walker doesn't travel. Mm -hmm. um, we're all getting up there. Uh, I just turned 70. Um, I could still get around and plan to, but I, 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 I want to go back to that comment you made earlier, uh, Colleen, about nostalgia. Yeah. The past is always sweeter than we remember, I think. Um, what Tim said at the concert about um, nostalgia was, I think is important. How do we sing this music or uh, 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 the great songs by the Minneapolis composers? by the English composers, by uh, Rory Cooney, by David, Gary Daigle, by uh, Tom Kenzie, by the women composers, ja uh, Jeanette Whitaker Sullivan, uh, by so many others. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? Bernadette Farrell. Yeah. How do we sing that today in a way uh, that locates me in the present to say, um, here I am. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Well, I don't want to look at your word. I want you to confirm everything that I believe and condemn those people that don't think otherwise. Right, right. But to say, um, you have the words of everlasting life. 
and they're going to lead me into places where I don't want to go is a bold move. Yeah. And so, so to wrap it up, um, the five of us won't travel anymore together. The, the other four of us may. I don't know. Got it. Um, we have a question. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, I don't know that. well, we have a comment from Sylvia on Facebook, and she just wants to say thank you for evangelizing through your music. And we have one last question from YouTube. Rose wants to know if there will be a DVD or a video of the last show. That's the plan. <laughs> there are a lot of other yeah. camera people running around with me. <laughs> I know. There were tons of them. Um, that's what we hoped for. We did video tape the thing. Um, um, our uh, sound engineer, I, I, as I recall, has uh, either hip or knee surgery in the next week. And so he's, he's not going to be exactly available for a while. He has some kind of surgery. God bless him, uh, Lucian. And um, at the same time, uh, we're all going to get a chance to review the video to make sure, you know, we're not doing stupid things or <laughs> whatever. Um, but to make sure that it's, uh, uh, it is a gift and it recognizes the gift given and shared and shared back from the people of God. That's, that's the key, I think. I think so, too. Well, Rock, thank you so much for not only the gift of your, your music, but also for joining us here on Behind the Story. And thanks, too, to our viewers at home for sending your questions and your comments. For more videos like this, subscribe to America's YouTube channel. And you can also find our coverage of the St. Louis Jesuits' final show at americamagazine.org. Thanks. Thank you, Colleen. <laughs> Thank you.